The real estate sector has been targeted by the taxman as one of the key sources of revenue for the coming financial year. The feeling among many is that players in this sector have had it the easy way for a long time. Today we'll look at the issues arising here. All right, Vincent, it's nice to have you on the show, Money and Markets. Now, for starters, give us a digest of how the real estate industry is moving. Charles, I think you come at the right time. The industry at the moment, uh, we can call it a buyer's market. Buyer's market, we mean that actually there is a lot on the market that is for sale and probably less buyers available for the market. Mm. And I think that explains the economy, how it is behaving. Because if you have less liquidity on the market, purchasing power is down then you have a lot actually on offer and no one is able to offload it. So I think that's how it is, that's on for sale. <clears throat> when it comes to the rental market, of course you, housing is the basic need and the only difference you see is that people are trying to reallocate their costs in terms of shifting from the higher end properties to preferably you know, lower income properties. But of course, we also see a lot of space in commercial buildings which are empty because the absorptive capacity is low. So in principle, it can say that we are still in that uh, status of last year. And we hope that maybe as the oil and other sectors kick in, next year we are likely to start going up. Recently we had a number of tax proposals put on the table by government. What is your view of this? Uh, proposals? No, uh, we think that uh, of course government uh, in terms of uh, the effort of uh, offering public services and goods, roads, yeah. electricity, health and others, there is need for money at the government level to be able to run this infrastructure. But when it comes to property, we are only concerned on the cumulative effect of how the different tax burdens which are targeted to the real estate industry, how will they impact the supply side vis-a-vis -vis the demand side. Example in point, you know you have local jurisdictions, uh, the local government, uh, uh, town councils, uh, municipalities allowed to charge their own property rates, and those go between 4 to 6 percent. Then you have, of course, the proposed 20 percent <coughs> rental income tax. Go down to, of course, the VAT, which is associated to materials for construction. I mean, then of course people have mortgages from the banks uh, and that the rates of course, uh, we can say maybe 18 or 17 up to 23 percent depending on the situation. Maintenance costs, if you are to insure the property, you have of course 0 0.1 percent okay. or 2 percent of the value. Now if you put all this together into the cost of how much the developer who has put up a property is likely to pay in taxes, it may be less attractive for return on investments if you do the calculations. Now, I think the framers of the taxes and how they come out with the 20%, 4% and others need actually to go deeper into the mathematics of how actually this all impact in terms of return on investment. And then you can talk about foreign direct investments, attractions, and also talk about the local investors actually looking at real estate as one of the attractive sectors to invest in. So generally, we think that it is I mean, the government has to always have taxes on different goods and services to be able to get money, but technical expertise is very crucial for how much on which areas should be taxed in order to keep the businesses afloat, because we are saying we need to feed the cow and therefore milk it. Now, the other things which I would like to put across at this point in time is that during the construction process, there are burdens that actually developers or supply side of the real estate products go through. For example, bringing water on site, bringing electricity on site, paving the roads to go to those sites. At the moment, as we speak, of course, it has been all developer-based burden. Government or the central or state is not playing a role there. They have been promising to do so, and we hope that comes in, because that's where you can actually lessen the cost of the construction, and they are far looking forward to have what we call an affordable house. But in all perspective, we are worried about the numbers when it comes, would the government maybe charge 10% rental income tax or instead of 20%, that one we need to sit and have a conversation about it. Mm. it help us understand what the impact of this would be on the real estate sector. Now, um, Charles, I mean, everyone speaks for their own sector and everyone says, you know, each sector has a big role to play in the, in the economy and the GDP of this country, but we are saying, look, 
the illicit sector is one of those sectors that has a very multiplier effect when it comes to job creation. If you look at the skilling program of the country and when we're looking at uh, having a lot of arts and people or practical people coming to the industry, we're talking about plumbers, carpenters, electricians, mansions, name them. All these are engaged at the same time when the construction is being raised from the ground towards up. So what happens if, for example, one building is scaled out of the economy not being built, it means that you lose that multiplier effect. So the numbers, we can get them tomorrow and another day, how much actually one building jobs are created by just investing one dollar into a construction site. I will prepare that and next time we can engage. That's one. Number two, I mean, there is what we call uh, the real estate is a platform for everyone. All businesses, the SMEs, the, everyone who trades in a building or in a certain space. So if you have less commercial space being put on the market or you have less residential houses put on the market or less shopping malls, warehouses, you're affecting actually the other businesses. But what we are likely to see is that most probably is that you have less supply and then you have more demand in the future and then that raises the cost of rent per square meter or per apartment. Or per, and that can actually be a big pain to the industry. But if you look at the other side is that uh, if you look at their accommodation residential, you don't want people to start going sleeping in slums because they all go into sleeping houses over 100,000 shillings in Zigo, we call it in Uganda. So we need to be very conscious about that. But at the same time, if government taxed this money and put, brought back subsidies or tax waivers or road sites and opening up new neighborhoods whereby the owners do not have to bring power and water and roads to their sites, that could actually be a positive effect. So whoever, I think there's a need for really technical advice and conversation to ensure that whatever is coming in does not constrain either the demand or the supply. So, from where you sit, what should be the ideal situation? I think from now onwards is that we're all pretty optimistic that we need to... Because every country, when you're flying over that country, the sign for wealth, the sign for this country's poor or rich is how their, their housing, their infrastructure is laid on the ground. You don't have to first go down there to ask because you see nice houses, nice roads, nice parks within the city, then you know that the country is third world or you know, first world. So with that in view, we think that we need to talk, we need to agree on the numbers. Tax is okay, but how much? I think that's the big issue. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.